Hi, this is Ellen from the Chili Dog, and today I'm making a pair of switchback socks, and I'd like to show you how to knit a band heel. A band heel is similar to a traditional flap and gusset heel, because you start by knitting across half of the sock stitches and creating a heel flap. Also, after the heel is made, you end with this shaped gusset section. You may notice, however, that the flap is actually shorter than a traditional flap, and it's not necessarily reinforced with slipped stitches. Also, if you look at the bottom of this sock, you'll notice that there's no turn heel. So instead, the heel shaping is created by dividing the last row of the heel flap into three sections. The center section becomes a neat rectangular band that runs down the back of the heel all the way to the bottom of the foot. Stitches are decreased on either side of the band while still knitting across full rows of the heel. So the stitches of the sock heel taper down around the bottom of the foot. So let me show you how it's done. A band heel is worked across half of your total sock stitches. So it's helpful to, to divide your stitches so that the instep or top of the foot stitches are out of the way. If you're knitting using the magic loop method, the instep stitches are held on the cord of your circular needle while you work across the rest of the heel. If you're using DPNs, it's easiest to divide your instep stitches across two separate DPNs and then place the heel stitches onto a single needle. So for my sock, I have 64 total stitches around the sock, so I'm working the heel across 32 stitches. The heel flap for a band heel is created by working in rows of stockinette stitch, which is knit on the right side, purl on the wrong side, across your heel stitches. And before I begin knitting, I'm going to show you a couple quick pro tips. First, before you start the flap, if you put a locking stitch marker right through the center of the first heel stitch and also of the last heel stitch, it's going to make it so that later on it's easier to pick up the gusset stitches. And I'll show you why in my next video. My second pro tip is when you're working the flap, if you slip the first stitch of every single row purl-wise, it makes it easier also to pick up the stitches for the gusset later on. So you just continue working in stockinette stitch until you've worked half as many rows as there are heel stitches. So again, I'm working my heel across 32 stitches, so my flap is going to be 16 rows long and have that one slip stitch at the beginning of every row. One important thing to remember is that the heel flap has to be an even number of rows. You have to end after a wrong side row. So for example, if you're working your heel across 34 stitches, dividing that in half would be 17. So that's not going to give you an even number of rows. So you would have to decide whether you want to do either 16 rows or 18 rows for the flap. As you work across the last wrong side row of your flap, it's helpful to place markers dividing the flap into three sections. This center section will be the band that runs down the back of the heel to the bottom of the foot. So if you're using a pattern, it's going to tell you exactly how to divide your stitches. And for the pattern I'm using and the size I'm making, I have 11 stitches on each side section and 10 stitches at the center. Since this tutorial is focused more on technique and not the math involved in design, I'll just kind of give you a good guideline for how wide this center band should be. So if you're making adult size socks to fit a women's US size six shoe or smaller, the center section should be about an inch wide. If you're making a sock to fit a shoe size of women's US size 7 to 12 or men's US size 5 to 10, 
this center band should be about one and a quarter inches wide. And anything for US men's size 13 and up, you want it to be about an inch and a half in the center section. Now we're ready to start the heel shaping and creating the band. So just like for the flap, every row of the band shaping starts by slipping the first stitch of the row purlwise. And then on right side rows, you're just going to knit all the way across the row until you reach that second marker. So when you get to the first marker, you can just slip it from your left needle to the right needle and keep it out of the way. Once you reach the second marker, slip the marker from your left needle to your right needle and then you're going to do a decrease called a slip slip knit and all that means is you're going to slip the first stitch knit wise slip the second stitch knit wise and then you want to knit those two stitches together through the back loops and then just continue knitting until you get to the end of the row On the purl side of the shaping, again, we're going to start the row by slipping that first stitch purlwise. And then go ahead and purl across again until you reach that second marker. And just slip that first marker out of the way when you get to it. When you reach the second marker, go ahead and just slip it from your left needle to your right. And then you're going to do a purl two together decrease, which is just what it sounds like. You're going to take two stitches and purl them together as if they were a single stitch. And then again, just keep purling until you get to the end of the row. And you'll continue decreasing in the same manner by decreasing one stitch after the second marker on each row until only one stitch remains in each side section. And as you work, you'll notice there are no stitches being decreased in this center section. You'll always have the same number of stitches between your markers. As you get to the last wrong side row of your band shaping, you can actually go ahead and drop the stitch markers off your needles as you're working. So again, I'm going to slip that first stitch purlwise, and I can just drop that marker off because I don't need it anymore. And purl across until you get to the second marker. And again, once we get to that second marker, we can just go ahead and drop it off the needles because we don't need it anymore. And then purl those final two stitches together. And we have the band here in the center and the stitches have been decreased on either side of the band. Finally, to set up for the gusset shaping, we're going to slip one stitch and then go ahead and knit to the center of the band. So when we actually start the gusset shaping, and I'll show you how in the next video, all of our rounds for the rest of the sock are gonna begin here at the center of the heel or on the bottom of the foot at the center. Now our heel flap and band are complete and I'll be back in the next lesson to show you how to pick up stitches to work the gusset on each side of the sock. If you enjoyed this lesson and don't want to miss any of my weekly tutorials, make sure to subscribe to my channel, The Chili Dog, on YouTube. Until next time, happy knitting!